Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Nirish Kumar Singh and we are talking about extra tutorials. The next tutorial we'll be stepping into is to understand how to make use of parameters when creating a test. The scenario basically talks about running a single test with multiple set of data. And this is also called as data-driven testing in certain aspects of automation testing. But the concept basically lies in passing on a parameter instead of hard-coded value. For an instance, if I have to run a test with multiple set of data, I generally have to recreate the test or I have to call the test multiple times under a particular test set or test suite within my instance. But the point is, why do you have to copy the test several times or call the same test again and again when you can run with multiple set of data without iterating the steps or instructions what you have written in the test case. So today we'll be understanding how X-Ray supports this amazing option well within the tool that how to pass instead of hard-coded value a parameter which can be using to replace further with dynamic set of data when running the executions. So let's get started and quickly understand the same. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be trying to understand how to parameterize a test in X-Ray, which includes how to create parameters, adding parameters to the test, and different types of parameters which X-Ray supports. In order to get started, the number one thing is, of course, to create a quick X-Ray test right here in the Jura instance. And we'll be just calling it out, for example, this is a new test. And creating it, that's where we can jump onto this particular test and uh, we can start talking about what exactly are the parameters which we can have a look onto. So opening the issue will give me a quick view of the test interface and uh, we have known this from our previous tutorials that how to write a test case and uh, it just needs to interact with the test details window where you would find the steps to write your test cases. But this time we will be writing test cases once again but with respect to the particular kind of you know parameters where we don't have to hard code the value but we will run the test through different set of values which we can make use of from the data sets provided. So right here in the test details view, if you remember, we have added steps using this option right here in the X-ray. But now it's time for us to click on the data set where we can actually declare our parameters and define the required set of repository values, which we would be looking forward to use in our script. So click on data set here. And uh, this should allow me to create a parameter. So let's create our very first parameter. So assume that this test will be for username and password to check a particular uh, login page so i will just call it out as username and i'll use the type as text we'll talk about the list a little later so we will use the text type here and click on create so i got my very first parameter there and let's create another one and i'll call it out as the password which is going to be the second set of value which i want to run with and in case you are interested to add even the parameters for the result page you can in fact do this just for an instance to show you an example I'll also be uh, using this to a certain extent just to show you that how exactly parameters can be used in expected result too now it's time for us to add more values to the each parameter because right now we just created a parameter and it does not have any value defined for it for example my uh, username is hello and the second part your username is hello1 or hello2 whatever it is and then I would say for example hell right now when I'm trying with a valid combination here right I would say the password which I'm looking for is admin and here I'm trying with admin1 and here I'm trying with uh, say for example uh, admin at the rate 1 now, given that my first test is having only the valid inputs, I'm expecting a different outcomes and I can even iterate my results accordingly. For example, I would say here valid and then I'll say here invalid and here I should say invalid again. Now the point is, if I want to publish quickly some results from my database, which could be hard coded in terms of the output which we are expecting from the application, we can 
actually publish our results in the parameter form as well. Now that's it, let's click on save here and we are ready to get started with writing our test cases right from here. So click on the new button and uh, define the new step here. And the new step, what I'm saying is enter the username as and use the dollar key to start using your parameters which you have defined and I'll use your username. And if you want, you can push this value to the data table, right, data column as well by using the data should be username or you can just use the action column to define the same in parallel right so expected result is the username uh, should be or you can just say username is valid so I'll use their uh, at the rate result right so this is my first step if you want to write it in a very uh, kind of you know uh, specific way for example you can say then right here enter the password at the rate uh, this is going to be password and my results would remain same that is the login so it, it just depends the way you write your test case right you, you, if you're going by step by step or you're writing everything together then you would say here click on login button which makes more sense right so this completes my iteration or process like there are three step process I can just put them together here and put it in the bulleted list or numbered list which makes more sense and I'm ready with my first test right so this is how I can make use of parameters in my uh, test case preparation instead of using hard coded values and I can define this like every single iteration when I run this for three times right you will see the real value during the execution right now I would see the only the parameter names so it's just limited to that the second thing what we can do here is when we come to the data set, we can even provide information uh, from the point of list. Now list is something which you think uh, you want to randomize or probably make use of it from a particular aspect. For example, let's create a parameter here, right? And I would say uh, the name uh, is equal to say for example, fly from city, right? And instead of using text, I'm using list here. And I would provide the list items, for example, Mumbai, Dubai, Singapore, right? Or maybe any other place which you are interested in. For example, I could say uh, Chennai, right? I'll just place it. Now click on create. Now this is ad hoc list, right? You can decide right here while, do, while doing the iteration that what value would you like to use. So the parameters are again not hard coded. Otherwise, I get the options to define what should I use in each combination. For example, here I want to use Singapore. Here I want to use maybe Chennai and sort of thing. So point is the list parameter is already having the prefixed values which we define and for each iteration of the test along with the text values which you have provided we can decide which value would you like to run with and run the iterations so the list option and text options work something similar what we have just seen right now but the scenario could vary accordingly you have data pool with you you have certain pool of information you can just put it accordingly on that particular window and it will take it from there right so similarly if you want to continue creating more parameters you do have provisions to make use of the name of the field again like for example you want to check the price if you're talking about testing a particular application so instead of saying price you could say like um, I want to test color of a particular product and combinatorial is used in order to combine multiple things there right so I would say list here again and I would list the items as, uh, okay, not the list, uh, keep it as text, let's create this. And here is my option, combinatorial parameter. And I'll provide some colors here, for example, red, I would say blue, and I would say, or let's keep it as red and blue. You say, for example, for a particular product, you just have two colors available with you. And I'm creating another one, and I would say, for example, the um, assume that this is a kind of you know automotive and I'm using transmission type right and I would say combinatorial again and click on create right so you you can make use of your you know pairwise technique here very well in the x-ray and I would say transmission type is either manual 
or automatic or semi-automatic, right? So now, if I come here and say try or generate all combinations, click on this, and you would be able to see all the combinations defined here, right? If you see, now I have got color option with this particular combination. So red tried with all three tests, and blue tried with all three tests. So we initially created three set of parameters or three iteration of uh, data. Now we gave the global parameters that, hey, use color red and blue and see me to show me all the combination which are possible and red is being tried with all three iterations blue is being tried with all three combination similarly if i want to combine transmission type on top of it they will have further combinations look at this so if i just say confirm and this is my list of all possible now manual being tested with both the colors right and three iterations of each so Three iterations with red, manual. Three iterations with blue, manual. Three iterations with red, automatic. Three iterations with blue, automatic. And similarly, three iterations red, semi-automatic. Or three iterations blue, semi-automatic again. So kind of what I'm trying to say is currently now if I have to run this test, I'll be having 18 iterations of this test just to try the possible combinations of particular parameters which you want to pass. Now this is where the overall parameter inputs can be defined and can be used at any point of time. So if you want to save this and just continue back on your screen and you would like to create a new test, all you have to do is define the parameter name and make use of it. So just for an instance, if I, for example, say that, you know, uh, I would say enter the departure city as and I'll put this and I'll make use of fly from. Similarly, enter the arrival city as, and this will be my fly to, oh, sorry, didn't I put that? Okay, no worries. So kind of like I forgot to add another parameter, but yeah, that should be fine because we just want to tell you. Now in this, for example, in this particular country, you have tried fly from and fly to maybe number of passengers. So we just tried combining multiple different scenarios together just to show you the best utilization of the parameters in X-ray. So we included basic uh, set of parameters like text, we used list, and at the same time we used combinatorial parameters by combining them with your existing iterations. If you just want, don't want to use uh, the existing iterations, then this is where you can just ignore the three different uh, rows of data like these three iterations generally you know when it comes to the execution either you use combinations or you use the three information right but there's no harm in the scenario what we're looking at where we had some hardcore information like this and on top of it we wanted to combine with another set of data so point is i just gave you the best applicable scenario which you can have from any particular application right you can have some standard text-based you can have some drop downs, you can have some combinatorial, and the overall set of test cases can be prepared for you. And all I have to do is import this test and run it in the scenario. Right? So I'll just call the, hold on here for today, and we'll look forward to understand the executions part in our next tutorial. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.